Good morning, guys. I'll slay it in ski bakers. Oh, we're starting out a little bit earlier today because I've got a bottle of sugar's buckling and the pigs are sleeping in two separate shelters. So I want to see if we have piglets. Take a look. Oh! I figured when they were in two separate shelters that so that was the case. Let me get Freya fed here. Oh my goodness, I don't think I can count them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like eleven. boy. Eleven babies. Good job, Mama. So, for size-wise, there's my hand. I don't have very big hands, but... <laughs> it's a couple of little bit smaller ones. Bigger one. Let's see. That's the boy. Girl. Girl. Ooh, boy. So it looks like some of the smaller ones. Well, that's a little bit smaller. That's a boy. That's a girl. That's a girl. Good job, Eldred. And I think it looks like she's done. There was, it looked like placentas from both horns. Jason and I were guessing, both guessing 12, so we were pretty close. Piggy piggies. Uh, oh, they're so cute when they're this little. And then they get big. Okay, well, if I didn't double count while they were squirming around in there, I believe there is six females and five males. Now we just keep an eye on them. Eldred was a great mom. Last fall, didn't have to do anything extra for her. Just feed her and she feeds the babies. And Freya is due, so I think St. Patrick's Day. Oh, we got a little bit of a storm blowing in. It's kind of windy. Um, I don't know what I was going to say, but Freya's due about another month. Do you think Classy? Classy's due as a guess on Saturday. I don't really know that that's actually when she'll deliver. I didn't see her bread, so whenever the babies are ready. here. She was laying with them. How's your babies, Mom? Yeah? They're so big. They're so big. You did a good job. Alright, get them some breakfast. See if Sugar's Buckling needs a bottle. Probably, huh? Yeah? Or are you feeding him now? 
Okay, chores are done. Naz's babies. Sugar's babies. He still seems like he's kind of standing hunched up all the time. Maybe she's not, really, maybe she's not taking care of him because she knows there's something wrong with him. I don't know. He eats pretty well, so we'll just keep feeding him and see how it goes. Excuse you. Move. Oof. Everybody out here is eating. I'm going to go grab my pig feed buckets. Pigs are eating. Oh, water everywhere. So you can kind of see. I don't know how well you can tell it on here, but the water kind of runs across and down there, down here, and then from up here, kind of on that side hand from here and it all just kind of runs down the middle and then kind of down our alley or lane or whatever up there you want to call it. Where's it going big guy? Oh, I think I got to go in and clean up my kitchen a little bit. There's some dishes that need to be done but since we're not going to have any kids today, I might try to show you my sourdough. Um, and I'll show you feeding my starter. And then kind of show you what the discard is. And then I put stuff together last night to make just a sourdough sandwich loaf. And a couple more loaves. I don't know if you can see the piglets over the top of her or not. It looks dark in the camera. But they're all in there eating, laying, looking content. Yeah, you'll be okay. She'll let you in there soon. Last fall, they took care of each other's babies. And of course they had, what, 13 between the two of them. We already have 11 this spring. I may not get every step recorded in this. Um, sometimes I just kind of go off on my own little thing and completely forget to take you guys with me, sorry. But I have my sourdough sandwich bread that I've, I don't know if I've showed you the whole process before, but I've showed you the bread. Um, it is, I got it from Homesteading with the Zimmermans, but it is, uh, she got it from Venison for Dinner. So we're going to make two loaves of that, and then the last five loaves of sourdough bread I did is the recipe from Little Spoon Farm. So we're going to do two loaves of that. I think I'm going to try some of the freeze-dried blueberries to see if maybe it doesn't make such a sticky mess. And then I'm going to try cinnamon raisin again with kind of a cinnamon brown sugar swirl. But it's not going to ferment overnight in the refrigerator because it just became a syrupy mess with the sugar and stuff in it. So we're going to try baking that this evening after it um, proofs in the loaf pan. So I think that's what we're going to do. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> so I am going to get that sourdough started first because it has to sit for a while before I can go on to the next steps and then we'll start the sourdough sandwich bread. Um, 
And then I will show you guys my sourdough starter and feeding that. I don't know, I got a lot going on here and I'm kind of lost today. <laughs> so I started this last night. This is just my starter, which is here. I'll explain that later. Water and some flour. You mix that up really well, cover it, let it sit overnight, usually at least eight hours or so. I think I did mine about 9, 10 o'clock last night, so it's been 12 hours. Um, you can probably see it's bubbly. And so to that, we're going to add, I've got this written down for four loaves, so I have to take a second to think. We're going to add two and a half cups of water. And you want your starter, I think they call it, they pronounce it Levain, to float. Abel's been outside barking at a white bag stuck in a tree over there. So I am going to have to go get that so I can show them, show him that it's not here to harm him. So see how that floats. That means that the yeast in it is good for making bread. And then we're going to add about eight cups of flour to this. It says eight cups. I think last time I added more because it was really wet. And we're going to add a little more water to it still. So after we add flour, we have to add a quarter cup of water with our four teaspoons of salt dissolved in it. So that's going to sit and dissolve for a while. So we have to think about that. It was still pretty wet last time. Even adding a little extra flour, although I may or may not have lost track of counting. Yeah, I did. So maybe I was a cup short. I don't know. But it still turned out good. Made really soft crust. So, on the video, at least now I can go back and check if I lose track of how many. One. Two. Four. So we're going to start with half of the flour and I'm just going to kind of blend this in best I can. I did order some rye flour, light rye and dark rye to try making a marble rye sourdough. So I'm excited for that to get here. The neighbors are coming over for Super Bowl. So I'm putting together my cooking list. I normally it's just Jason and I and whatever kids are home, and I make enough appetizers, it's five, for probably like 10 to 15 people, because I don't watch football, so I just cook all day. Six. So last year the neighbors came over, I think it was Right, their first Super Bowl living out here. So we're gonna do the same thing again and have them over. I 
maybe we'll have some classy babies so that Amanda and I don't have to sit in here and watch football. <laughs> or maybe we'll just go play with piglets. So this says you want to just mix this together to a shaggy dough. I have seen people just add all their water and their salt now instead of trying to incorporate it later but I haven't tried that yet I'm sure it really probably doesn't make too much of a difference I mean this way you're hydrating all of your flour before you add the salt Was that that was six cups this is seven and the sandwich loaf doesn't ferment as long it just has basically two rises to ferment. I thought about trying to kind of between the rises, put it in the fridge to get a little more of the sourdough attributes to it. I think we're gonna have to go in and do the rest of this with our hands. It's a really good sandwich bread as is, so for now we're just going to kind of leave it be. As it's starting to mix in getting sticky again. So we've got one more cup to add to this. I probably should have filled that before I got my hand all sticky. great with keeping on track with measuring things. Probably should be more with baking, but it usually works out. If not, I tweak it a little. Once we get this incorporated to what the recipe says, a shaggy dough, we cover the bowl and let it rest for about an hour. I have other recipes said 30 minutes. This one says an hour. Um, I think last time I did like 30 to 45 minutes. I don't know. Basically, like I said, right now I think you're just letting your flour hydrate. And I must have been short a cup of flour last time because this is definitely not as wet and sticky as it was last time. 
which will make the rest of the process a little bit easier, I think. scrape some of the dry stuff off the bottom and the sides just so that it can it all sit together. Like I said, I've not been doing sourdough very long, so I guess you guys are going to kind of learn with me. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Okay, so I am going to cover this and set it off to the side for about an hour and so our next one is our sandwich bread which is the same thing same um, starter water and flour just a larger amount and to that, I always start this early because I always get it too hot and then it has to sit. I have butter, honey, milk, and salt. And this needs to be between 100 and 105, which it's been sitting and it's only about 92, but that's okay. Um, you don't want this any higher than 100 to 105 because it will kill the yeast in your starter. So to that, we're going to mix these and I'm going to do this one in my mixer because I'm going to let the mixer do the kneading. It doesn't have to sit and do stretch and folds like the other one. So I'm just going to pour all of this in. <clears throat> and then we're going to put this starter in. You can see how bubbly it is. Oof. <clears throat> It is floating again in our milk butter mixture. <clears throat> so then we're going to mix this with four to five cups flour just kind of depends on how wet your starter was to begin with. I like my starter when I feed it to be pretty thick. I've gone through several starters over the last year or two, probably at least two, trying to do sourdough. And then I'd forget about it and it would get nasty and mold. And then I'd have to buy a new starter and start over. So you can probably tell that that's floating on there. So I think I finally have it somewhat figured out at least. I haven't killed this starter yet, so maybe. Bring this kind of over for you guys to see. I'm not going to go show the entire mixing process. I think you can see that, yeah. Um, 
because it takes a little while to knead. It's once I get the flour in, it needs to it needs to knead. It has to knead for probably close to 10 minutes. Um, and if it's still kind of sticky, then I will add a little bit more, go another couple minutes. So I'll show you the start, maybe a couple clips in between. So we're going to do, like I said, four to five cups. I'm going to add two or three right in the beginning. Start with three and then add from there. Ooh. Scrape my sides a little bit here. So the only thing that I don't like so much about this mixer is I feel like I'm always scraping the, down the bowl. I've seen people adjust with a screw, but I've only ever seen that on the ones with the tilt head. Uh, I guess I have to look. I don't know if this one has something like that or not. So I'm going to add in the fourth cup.
five cups of flour. I am going to let this knead for about 10 minutes and then see what it looks like after that. catch up, like, and respond to some of the comments on videos and our short for the uh, piglets born this morning. Sometimes it doesn't show me all of the comments, so I try to scroll through them every now and then just to make sure I'm not missing anything. If I do miss you, I'm sorry, but it's looking pretty sticky. I don't know if you guys can see how sticky it is, so... We're going to wait another five minutes or so and just see, usually once it needs a little bit longer, it kind of comes together better. Okay. I'm just going to try to set you guys up while I add this, but I don't have anything to get to the right height. So our 10 minutes is up. It is still pretty sticky. to the neighbors she had an emergency she had to leave the house and she had people there working on the house so I went and sat over there until her husband got home in case the guys working on the house needed anything so our first dough we mixed is ready to add the salt water I'm gonna turn this back on and see what it looks like I'll let it knead for just a short time Found it's really not that hard. 
to do it by hand. The first time I did it, I did not work it in enough and it was a mess. back from the neighbors. I stopped and checked the goats. Kids looked good. Probably need to go out and give Sugar's Buckling another bottle. I would really like for him to stay out there with them. I do not need a house goat. I was kind of hoping that she would start feeding him. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Maza Queen, Maza Queen, I call her Maza Queen, but Maza Keen was still quite full this morning, so she may need a milk out. Well, she's not like an amazing producer, she does produce quite a bit of milk. And for two kids, they just may not be able to keep her emptied. Okay, this one is completely pulled away from the bowl. And kneading now, it's not sticking to the sides at all. kind of come back together as one ball. Eventually. shut that off. And scrape this down. And I am going to let this rise. I'm going to cover it and let it rise until it's doubled in size. The recipe says, yeah, it doesn't say how long. <clears throat> My house is not as warm today as it usually is. The stove is not, the wood stove is not lit. I have to look and see what it says the temp is in here. So it's not going to rise as quickly as it normally does, which is fine because I have some other stuff that I need to do. So 
it's slightly sticky, but it doesn't, you know, I can pull my fingers out without the entire dough ball sticking to me. So we're going to cover that with this wax wrap. I probably have one of my silicone lids that would fit that, but that's easy enough and set this out of the way. So I just went and checked. The other side of the house says it is 75 degrees. So it's actually probably a little warmer than that in here. I'll wipe this up real quick. And I will show you feeding my starter. So this is my starter jar. I just use a quart jar. If I have a lot less, I can use a pint jar. I've had it in half gallon or gallon jars. Just kind of depends on how much I plan on using it. And this lives on top of my refrigerator. The rubber band is, I'll show you once we feed it, that's where it starts, how full it is. And then when you leave it to sit, it will rise and should at least double. So that reminds me of where my starting point was. In this jar, you can see it started here and it rose up to here. So it started at a cup and it was over two cups when it hit its peak and then it fell back down. Normally I would just feed this and let it go, but for the sake of showing you guys, I'm going to put a little bit of starter into a new jar to kind of show you what discard is, like when I make discard chocolate chip cookies or things like that. That would be what the discard is. So I'm going to take this, put on this jar, we'll move it once we're ready, and um, let me get a little bit of water. So I've seen a lot of people say that you need to put it on a scale, you need to weigh it. I think that was part of my problem when I first bought a like dehydrated starter was I just didn't want to do it because I didn't want to have to get out the scale and weigh and measure and everything else. So now that I have, I guess, just kind of started winging it. It's worked really well. That's just how my brain works. So I am going to kind of stir this down a little bit. And I don't feed this every day. Like I said, it lives on top of my refrigerator. When I know I'm going to use it, I will feed it. So I hadn't fed it for a couple days yesterday. I knew that I wanted to do bread today. I fed it yesterday morning and then I fed and made my starter last night that I showed you in the bowls that we started with. So I won't leave this on the refrigerator forever if I'm not going to use it. It will go bad a lot faster on the refrigerator, like on top of it sitting out, than it will in it. I have taken a small jelly jar and just put a couple ounces, a quarter cup or something like that in with a tight lid and stuck it in the refrigerator for several weeks and not touched it, months, whatever. Stir it up, feed it, and you're back to this. So, depending on how much you're gonna use it, I think that jar is cracked. Oh, it just has a defect, okay. So depending on how much you're going to use it, I've been using it a lot lately. Um, I made a discard pizza crust, so I had a half gallon jar three quarters of the way full because I kept feeding it. Actually, at least two times a day I was feeding it because I just took this, poured it onto a hot pizza stone and spread it out and had a really, th uh, really thin, crispy, cracker-like crust. So, if you're going to use it a lot, feed it and don't discard. 
If you're not going to use it very often, feed it less and discard if you need to. So I am going to, just for the sake of this, put about a half cup and I just go by the measurements on my jar. Like I said, I don't weigh. a half cup. Let's go a little bit more. Let's see what that leaves us in here. We were, I think, just over a cup in here, so I split it about half and half. Not very even, but close enough. So I have a half cup in here, about, and just under a half cup in here. So this would be my discard. Um, some people will take that and feed it to their chickens, or I could put it in the pig feed. Um, this is what I would use, um, like when I made the pizza crust, or I think I had a discard bagel recipe or not bagel, it was a donut. Um, I use this when I make my crackers and stuff like that. So I could put this in a smaller jar, stick it in the refrigerator. I could leave it in this jar, stick it in the refrigerator. I can feed this. When I have discard, I can add it to this. Uh, most discard recipes you can use right out of the refrigerator. It's more, a discard recipe is replacing a little bit of your flour and water for sourdough starter or discard and it's just giving flavor it's not really doing anything else in your recipes i have a discard chocolate cake recipe that i made and it's got just a little bit of that kind of tart tang to it from the discard um, usually if i'm doing a discard something i just pull it right from my starter maybe i haven't fed it maybe i have i don't pay that much attention. So I feed mine equal parts flour to whatever starter I have. So I have a half cup of starter. And again, I'm not exact. This is a two tablespoon cup. It's I scooped with it, so it's probably kind of heavy. It's not level. That's about a quarter cup. That's about a half a cup, pretty close. And then I, they want you to weigh it because your flour, say 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water is, water weighs almost twice as much as the flour. So weighing it out, it ends up being you know, less water by measurement, but the same amount by weight. And I like mine at like a really thick pancake batter consistency, I guess. And that's what I kind of see the majority of people saying. If it's too runny, then Anything you add it to is going to be super runny, and you would have to add, I guess, more flour. So, let's see if I can make sure we get this. It's probably a little bit, it's thicker than, pan, you know, thick pancake, but that's how I like mine. And as it feeds on the flour, it will actually get runnier and I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to feed this too and then I will move my rubber band up to about where it's at. So it's just under a cup. 
lid on and back it off so that it's got room to get air and that goes on top of the fridge. It's a little bit warmer up there. Um, this is settled down to about a half cup. So if your house is not as warm, the top of your refrigerator typically is warmer with it running. Usually when my wood stove is going, I don't have to worry about it because my house is really warm. I could put it anywhere. I'm going to have to get more water for that one. I see some people add water to their starter first and then flour. I don't want it to be complicated or I'm not going to do it. I did use the neighbor's freeze dryer and freeze dry some starter. Just kind of in like almost like little hockey pucks in silicone cupcake liners. And it's a good thing I did because right after I did that, I killed mine got moldy and nasty I didn't pay attention to it so I rehydrated one and that's what I'm using now I didn't have to buy another starter I left several starters with the neighbor for letting me use the freeze dryer and she just rehydrated one not that long ago to start doing her own sourdough Okay. I'm going I'm going to clean up that spoon before it dries and gets all crusty on there because it is heck to try to get it off of anything that it dries on. So this one is just under a cup as well. I'm going to find a lid for this and just stick it right up next to the other one. Um, I'm not going to find another rubber band for this. I'll just stick it up there and then hopefully when we do some more stuff with the other dough, I will remember to show you guys when it's risen.